Hi Trojans, um, this is Jeff. I just got a message about uh, grades, about grades and credit attainment and students being on track and achievement levels and growth and um, opportunity gaps and you know the achievement gap and uh, disparities in our data and, and all of those things. And, and I've got a really short amount of time here to kind of address it and I've been thinking about how to do this over the last month. Um, I was in a PLC about a month ago and one of the teachers said that we're gonna fail you. And that was based on some conversation they were having about looking at uh, grade data and some of the disparities we were seeing with on track uh, grades. I think it was mid quarter two grades. And we can see where, you know, there was uh, um, larger gaps uh, and and you know, there's not a lot of time in a nine week quarter, we get that. And, and I asked the person, why would you say that? Why do you think that? And you know, what we're trying to do here is, uh, you know, increase, you know, 100% graduation, right? Isn't that always our goal? Trying to get every kid to pass a class. Um, and so but what we end up doing as human beings, we look at the red, right? We look at, we look at failure rates and, and E rates and things like that. And, and what I said was, that's not what these conversations are about. These conversations are about our own professional awareness. Our con these conversations are about looking at truths because the numbers are the truth, okay? Um, they're our current truth at that point in time, you know, at that mid-quarter point, December 10th or whenever grades were due. That was our truth of our kids, our assessment of our kids. And then when we start seeing the disparities as time goes along, um, we have to ask ourselves questions professionally, you know, why why do guys do better than the gals in my class? Why is that? And then hopefully I'm doing some internal reflection or talking to colleagues or whatever the case might be. Why do my students on an IEP do better in my classes versus students who are still learning the English language? Well, I could sit back and I could go, well, because they have an IEP and I have to do things legally um, and they have a case manager and with ELL, maybe all of those things aren't in play. Um, but as a professional, um, with with just you know the imperative to get all kids to make all kids successful, um, hopefully I'm I'm following the same type of plan for ELL students that I am for special education students. I'm creating the accommodations. I'm using the PSYOP strategies. I'm conferring with an ELL teacher if if the student's not you know making that type of progress. So that's, that's what the charts are really about. Um, it's to have open and honest conversations with teachers, well, with departments first and then teachers. And the reason we went with teachers who had less than or at 85% on track rate is we have to start somewhere. And quarter one in the, in the distance learning model we've used, about 80% of our kids earn credit. So we said we have to do better than 80%. So let's see if we can't, um, Talk to those teachers that have, you know, 15% or more failure rates um, and, and E and F rates, I should say, uh, which E's are failures at that point. It's just, you know, we know that's a highlighted group of kids. We can, we can afford those uh, students more time as a school. So um, I, I think part of the reason we're having these conversations and, <clears throat> and I know they take courage because they're not easy conversations to have. Um, but we have to have them because that's our truth. We have to talk about our truth. And at least in the conversations I've had with teachers, um, the, the dozen or so I've had, um, it's always been about what's working well, what are some success or um, celebrations you've had from quarter one, specific to grades, specific to kids earning credit. And you know, usually they kind of find these situations where kids have everything going against them, probably shouldn't pass a class, but eventually do. And then they can reflect on what changed, what happened. You know, there's things we have control over and, and there's things that kids have control over. Um, and there's some things they don't have control over and there's some things we don't have control over. Um, but I think it's important we reflect on that as professionals. So how can I maybe take those, those big wins or small wins that were big for a student and help another student replicate that? You know, this is, this kind of goes back to that starfish, uh, analogy starfish story you know I, I may not be able to help every starfish on the beach but i can help the one i'm picking up right now so 
Why are we doing it? Because it's our truth. Um, is it, does it take some courage to have these conversations? Yes, it does. What if we don't have these conversations? What if we just said our results are results and we kept moving on? The weight of that falls on the backs of our kids. And I don't know, I don't know one professional out there, a teacher, counselor, administrator, paraeducator, that would be okay with that. So we're gonna continue to have these conversations. We're gonna continue to celebrate what's going well, but we also need professionals to really reflect individually because those professionals Maybe some of you, you know best what is going on in your class. You know best what you're using with PSYOP and capturing kids' hearts and culture responsive teaching. And, and administrators, we can come in, we can do all the, the surveys we want, you know, kind of doing the drop bys and seeing what we're doing. But at the end of the day, you know best. You know. And and if we're not leveraging conversations like that, then then shame on us, shame on me. So yeah, we're gonna continue doing these. It's an important part of what we do. Eventually, what we'd like to see in PLCs is we're talking more about these kind of conversations with student work, with student data. And so far, we haven't seen that. We've, we've heard a lot about, um, and I'm going back years here, I'm not just talking about in COVID, logistical things, pacing things. We gotta get back to talking about kids and, and how they're doing and the kids that are struggling and what you're doing to help them and, and what's working for me. So that's taken it to a very um, molecular level, I guess. And if we take care of it at that level, we're gonna have a lot less conversations with administrators. I know that. So um, hopefully we can continue doing what we're doing and hopefully we can take that rate down. Hopefully our school rate drops down and then the teacher rate, we can go from like maybe, maybe 12%, maybe 10%, but right now we're gonna stick with 15% or 85 or less percent students on track or passing. So. So just heads up on that. It's not a bad, no one's out to get anybody, no one's in trouble, but the conversations we just have to have. Okay, guys, thanks for listening.